Good morning. Today, we are going to talk about one of my favorite topics. I've actually been trying to um, pare down all the information I want to share because I could talk about this one for days. But the question we're going to cover today is this. Is dairy bad if you have a thyroid condition? It is a great question and it goes really deep. So let's start first of all with dairy. What is it? Well, dairy is from cows. We all know that. So we have been drinking cow's milk since the dawn of time. There is a lot of debate about this. Um, one of the things I hear a lot is that no other species of animals drinks the milk from other species. I hear that one a lot, which is true. Um, but humans have used dairy from cows. We've used milk from sheep, from camels, from goats. We've used that since, like I said, the beginning of time. So dairy is incredible. Yes, dairy will feed a baby cow. Another uh, criticism I often hear is if you want to gain weight fast, drink dairy because dairy is how baby cows get fat really fast. Now that criticism is funny because baby cows drink gallons upon gallons of milk every day. And yes, they gain weight rapidly. Humans don't drink gallons upon gallons of dairy every day. So that's another criticism I hear that doesn't fly with me. So back to dairy. We've been drinking it since the dawn of time and dairy is very nourishing in its raw form. When it comes right from the cow, it's got a lot of calcium. It's got phosphorus. It's got good bacteria. It's got enzymes in it. It's got vitamin D. It has iodine, which is so essential for the thyroid. So it is full of so many essential vitamins and minerals. It is what has been termed the perfect food. But back in the 1800s, don't quote me on the date. I was going to look that up, but this was overseas. Um, the, it was during the wartime actually. Oh man, I should get the date right. Anyway, what happened is the, the production of dairy increased, uh, or they needed a higher production of dairy because more people were drinking milk. And so they started doing these cattle farms where they were getting commercialized farms where they would get all these cows together and they would feed them swill. So that was the leftover grains after they brewed alcohol from the grains. So they called these swill dairies. They would brew the alcohol, get these nasty leftover grains, feed them to the cows. They would lock the cows up into these little stalls and then they would milk them and they would sell that milk. Well, I hope I painted that as dismal as it was. The cows weren't getting the food that they are innately made to eat. They were becoming sick and the milk that they were producing was full of bacteria because they were not nourished. They weren't getting sunlight. They weren't eating grass. They weren't living in their natural environment. So this milk that was coming from these swill dairies was making people really sick. And there was all kinds of deaths involved. There was kids, children that were dying adults. So they started researching the milk and found out it had tons of bacteria. So this is where Pasteur comes in. He was a scientist and he discovered that if you heat bacteria, it will kill it. So they started pasteurizing milk. And what they do is they heat the milk and then it kills the bacteria. And then we can drink the product without getting sick. Great, right? Kind of. <laughs> so that has continued since then. I wish I had the date right. It was at least in the 19 somethings. Um, so it's been going for over a hundred years. Now it's good in the sense that, yeah, we don't get sick from the bacteria in the milk. It's bad because it denatures the enzymes that we need to digest it. It makes the calcium less available. It denatures the lactase. So now lactose intolerance becomes a problem. So it makes the milk less bioavailable to our bodies. Now, pasteurization, like I said, is spread across the board. It's now mandated. All the states in the United States require that you, I shouldn't say all, I don't know if that's true, but I know in California where I live, raw milk uh, the, the regulations on that are so high that you, um, can't sell raw milk without meeting all of these, these regulations. So to put it in perspective, pasteurized milk, you can have up to a hundred thousand living bacteria in that milk before they heat it. Okay. A hundred thousand little critters can be living in that milk. Good, bad, otherwise. And then we're going to heat it and then we're going to sell it to you. Think about this. There's a hundred thousand good, bad, and otherwise guys in the milk that are now dead and you're drinking that. Fantastic. So there's been some research about an autoimmune response that occurs just based on 
uh, the denatured bacteria that we're drinking in the milk. Uh, in terms of raw milk, they can have 30,000 parts per million of bacteria. The bulk of those are good. The bulk of those are friendly. If they are bad bacteria in the raw milk, well, then the good bacteria will kill them off. So there's no need for pasteurization also um, because the bacteria count is low. Okay, so pasteurized milk now is used uh, abroad and wide across the world and across the United States. It's used to make yogurts, it's used to make cheeses, it's used in liquid dairy, we see it everywhere. Now we have this problem. We are developing thyroid disease and we're developing bone loss. And both of those absolutely connect to dairy. And here's how. When you pasteurize dairy, like I said, it, it disables our ability to absorb the nutrients in it. So a cup of dairy is listed or regular milk is listed at like 300 milligrams of calcium. We know that we only absorb about a hundred of that. So you could drink milk for the calcium benefit and not get it since it was pasteurized and also due to a damaged gut. Now, when it comes to thyroid disease, we run up against another wall. You have to have high levels of stomach acid to break apart the calcium out of the food and then absorb it. So oftentimes when you have thyroid disease, your body will slow down production of stomach acid. That's just the nature of the disease. So now you're not able to extract the calcium from the foods you are eating, be it dairy or vegetables, and it's going to contribute to your bone loss. On top of that, if you're taking an acid reducing medication, so like a meprazole or a PPI, any of those um, type of acid reflux medications, they will decrease your calcium absorption too. So this is a long-winded discussion, but I want to keep it short today. The things I want you to know, if you're taking an acid reducer, you're not absorbing calcium efficiently because of the, the acid reducer. If you're eating pasteurized commercial dairy, that's not a good source of calcium. It also has the potential to trigger your immune system because of the dead bacteria that's in it. And also because of the proteins that are in that, I'm going to talk more about that tomorrow because it relates with gluten. So we'll cover more of that tomorrow, but yes, dairy should be eliminated. If you have a thyroid problem, if only temporary, pull it out, see how you feel. If you feel better, well then, Hey, that's something that you should probably avoid or something that you can do a couple times a week, cheese and butter. Um, I can absolutely be okay with those. If you can get them in the raw milk form, do it. Absolutely. Raw milk cheese is phenomenal. It has everything intact. It doesn't have any of those, um, gut inflammatory pathogens in it or any of the gut inflammatory proteins. Everything gets digested as it ages. So raw milk cheese. Yes. Have it butter. Yes eat that phenomenal. If you can get raw milk butter, even better, but butter is generally, it is just the fat part of the milk. And so generally people don't react to that. So this was a big circular conversation. I don't know if I said all the things I wanted to, um, but let me know your questions about dairy in the comments below. We'll be talking more about it in the coming days, but yes, avoid dairy, see how you feel. And then maybe just have cheese or butter a couple times a week if you can tolerate it. All right. I'll talk to you soon.